When things feel a bit chaotic, Instacart helps deliver milk and sausage. Add a little life to your cart. Get stuff from literally all your stores, from baby wipes to albacore. Add a little life to your cart. Instacart helps get your groceries. Your first three deliveries are free. Download Instacart. Add life to cart. Terms apply. Percolate on a particular mix of odd and inspiring news headlines in Wendy's Coffee House. Newsmakers with a pin shot for the unknown, unexplained, and unusual share their experiences with UFOs, ghost encounters, near death experiences, and more for your own unique blend of Wendy's Coffee House Curious. And now, here's Wendy. I can't decide what the best news of the week is. That Area 51 went off without a hitch. The storm Area 51. And the only incident that they had was, apparently, there was a a cow. They roamed free there. Somebody managed to hit one. Okay? But other than that, it was kind of the harmonic convergence of everybody who is interested, wants to be interested, would like to be affiliated, associated, or just wanted to go have a good time. <laughs> they all showed up. That, I don't know, that was the highlight. There's another one, though, that just happened. The ISS feed, that one too many S's, there's a triangle. And this is somebody who watches the feed. You know, everybody has their own special compulsion and obsession. And his happens to be watching the feed. And so he turns it into somebody else who's a prolific sharer of that kind of information on YouTube. And you can see it. He zooms in and shows you it looks like a, a triangle. And at first, it just looks like a little white blurb, a blop, blip on the screen. But maybe some, you know, cotton, cotton stuffing got caught somehow. Well, that's not what it is. All right. And it isn't a reflection. So they, they do a little zoom. And then the part where you really see that it isn't something that would be a little floaty is when it zooms very fast away from and out of view. That's when it looks interesting. So with CGI, who knows, but it looks like that that's legit. And that was, that's the other high point. And I'm into the UFO stuff because there have been several synchronicities and I'm just now trying to figure out how to catch up with the blog, um, uh, with fog and fog related. And I had interviewed somebody a while back about the electronic fog and that was affiliated with the UFO stuff and the Bermuda Triangle. So with that, and then there's, I've been in reading with, um, some of the UFO material, trying to figure out which experiencer I would like to revisit. And fog is a a very crucial element of that. So as I'm doing all of this, coming to work Monday, lo and behold, we're fogged in. At first, I go out, stars, moon, gorgeous, beautiful. And within about 20 minutes, there are areas of the metro, and we're in the Midwest, Kansas City, where you can't see. You can't even see the lights in front of you. That's how thick some of that fog soup is. So all these little synchronicities, and there's a bunch more that goes along with that. But what I was also dealing with was a lot of this past life and synchronicities between connecting with um, whether, you you know, what kinds of interaction you had on multiple levels, multidimensional kind of stuff. And one of the people that I had been reading about and preparing for was Wendy Rose Williams, and she does regression healing. That part is where you go back into a past life and see if there's anything there still traumatic that you're carrying with you that you can revisit and maybe fix, heal, or at least address so it doesn't have to interfere with the current life. So Wendy Rose Williams is my guest. The book is Regression Healing 1, and this is The Huntsman, The Lord High Manor, or High Mayor. Uh, Yeah, okay, sorry. And a World War II soldier. And she is also a near-death experiencer. And so a lot of this comes together in very extraordinary ways. So we're going to go with Wendy Rose Williams. I have to include the part because, you know, I'm Wendy. (laughs) And maybe we'll know who's talking. Hello, Wendy Rose Williams. And thank you for agreeing to an interview. Well, good morning. I'm so happy to be here with you, Wendy. Would you like to do a little background for people who have never met or heard of you? Because I think your story... Um, is a is a great starting point for what got you into regression healing. Absolutely. Well, I got into it in a really surprising way. I was living this traditional conservative life in a lot of ways and 
married, two kids, always working full time. Uh, my my um, background is an MBA, and was working in healthcare. And then things just shifted really, really profoundly for me um, in 2010, in particular when I was introduced to Journey of Souls by Dr. Michael Newton where he delineates over 7,000, um, the highlights of 7,000 of the patients that he saw during his career where he was doing past life regressions and life between lives sessions. So that was one major shift and also the near-death experience that I had back in August of 97 um, while I was pregnant with my youngest daughter was another uh, major shift. Well, for you, when you're reading all of the Michael Newton stuff, and I'm assuming Brian Weiss also fell in there and some of the other um, Absolutely. players, did you imagine that you would be doing this yourself? No, I would have fallen down on the floor laughing, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, yeah. <laughs> I would have said, you've got the wrong Wendy. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yes. And it's kind of how that happens. Uh, um, see, that that's what I'm getting into because in this particular story and what really sets it apart, because I've read a lot of these and I've also been to actually one of the events. Brian Weiss was here in Kansas City um, demonstrating, I think, kinetic awareness is what, what we had a, a little group session on. That was in itself a fun a fun little event. But with your experience with this book, you get into multiple past lives, not only of the person that you are counseling and working with, but the two of you are intertwined. That's what sets this whole story. That's what sets it apart. And how did, yeah. I mean, when when did you guys first connect? Because that isn't really, that those details aren't <laughs> here, okay? <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's a funny story. Um, you, went, you went right to the heart of it. Um, I had been divorced for about six or seven years, and I decided I would do something really simple called meet a nice guy. Ah. So, <laughs> That's really easy. Okay, good. Now you got my interest. Back in, <laughs> back, in, back in 2010. So, and not having dated in so many years, I went to younger friends and said, hey, how do you meet people nowadays? And they said, oh, it's online. It's this thing called Match.com. So uh, I said, uh, okay, I have no idea what that is or how to do it. So I literally had to have a younger girlfriend uh, show me a coworker and show me. And I met some nice people and I met some people that just where there was no match at all. But within a couple of months, I realized I needed to increase my geography a tiny, tiny bit. I had made it super, super tight at the time. You were able to literally do it like five miles within home. Oh, wow. Because okay. I, was, yeah. I was super busy. And because there were a lot of people on match in my area at that time, I really was able to drill it down. But the moment I changed it to 10 miles from my home zip code, the moment I did, I saw a profile come up and I just could not stop staring at the screen because I knew him. It's like I absolutely knew this man at a really deep visceral level. And I'm going through, you know, in my 3D logical brain, oh, did we meet at a conference or, you know, was this someone where I worked? And I'm just trying to figure it out. And the more I read his profile, I just, I just was, I just can't explain it. It just, it was such, it felt like a reunion. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm sitting here with the computer. You know, how can this be affecting me so deeply? Mm -hmm. So I sent him, I sent him a message via match. And we met a couple of weeks later, because it just takes a little bit of time to sync up schedules. And the moment he met in, walked into the restaurant, it was just kind of like, the world dropped away because I just, again, I knew this person so well. And it, it was just this feeling of, oh, there you are. I've been looking for you. We've got work to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> the feeling. Uh -huh. And he evidently was feeling it too because you know how sometimes someone takes like a second glance at your face? I mean, they really really look at you and see you. Right. Yeah. He literally, I was sitting on the bench in the, the foyer of the restaurant because the minute he walked in, it's like, I couldn't stand up because I felt 
it really felt like the world was shifting. It felt like an earthquake. And he dropped down on his knees in front of me because he was just so peering into my face and into my eyes. So we must have looked very funny. <laughs> <laughs> From anybody, yeah, the you observer. Know, it's just, right. And okay. it's just, and then like after a moment, we snapped out of it and went and had lunch and just were regretful to leave after three hours. And he's the one who introduced me to Journey of Souls and got me started on this path. Okay. We're going to take a break because we're going to go into that next step and how how that evolved. Again, my guess is Wendy Rose Williams. Regression healing is her specialty. It's Wendy's Coffee House, KCMO Talk Radio. Wendy's Coffee House, KCMO Talk Radio. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate your time. Um, you can check out the blog, wendyscoffeehouse.com. And I usually put links on that in various forms. Wendy Rose Williams is my guest. She's a regression healing specialist, therapist, and um, we started out with a near-death experience because that kind of set the tone. What gets even better with this is that in-between lives, afterlives, past lives connection with the guy she happened to meet on Match.com. I mean, that in itself is like a pinpoint. How the heck? Well, there are other things that happen that we don't really have any control over that say, oh, it's time. Well, that was, what was this? And you, you, so you guys, you guys met and you connect and the book is Regression Healing One. And this is past lives that you're dealing with for him to help erase. He had some neck and back pain. And so you were trying to specifically address that, but there's more to this. There's a whole lot more. So I don't know how you want to get into it, but (laughs) this wasn't your first rodeo. You guys are, you guys are connected beyond just this lifetime. And that's why that initial second glance really made a difference how do you how do you absolutely just, just dive in and maybe the best way to unpack it uh wendy is to understand that it's not required that a past life regressionist have any past lives with their clients to have a great session so this was just unusual this was just a personal journey for us because we needed to master some lessons mm-hmm. and the reason we kept meeting was we had not mastered forgiveness Mm. And we had not mastered, I had not mastered self-forgiveness. And when you haven't done so, you just keep meeting people because my belief is before we incarnate, we do some planning, some life planning carefully with, with guides, council of elders, you know, soul family, just you know, the best people that can give you input that are going to then incarnate um, with you or guide you from the other side until you master those important lessons. So that's my belief why um, he and I kept kept meeting. Well, okay. And I, maybe I need to backtrack a little bit too, because part of this is y'all tried to set up a recording session and usually you just do one little MP3 thing. And this time for whatever unknown, hello, spirit guide reason, you decided to also track it on your phone. And that's the brilliant part of this because, well, what happened? Well, what happened, and as you said, typically, yes, it's straightforward. I use the MP3, but this time I just kept, my intuition just kept twinging, uh, twinging. My guides just kept saying, you need to really make sure you record this. So I used my iPhone also Mm -hmm. and just pressed record on that as a backup. The MP3 was completely blank which has never happened before, never happened since. Mm -hmm. There was nothing wrong with it. We tested it. So I end up with this four-and-a-half-hour session on my phone, which I don't think an iPhone is even capable of recording something that long. (laughs) But it was was perfect. It was clear as day. Mm -hmm. But the issue was I couldn't get the file off my phone. I couldn't transfer it to him. Nor could the store. I go into the phone store. Everyone's like, how did you get this massive file on here? What is this? Hmm. So I sit down and transcribe it. Yeah. Thanks, mom. Which is a very big Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that. Because you're thanking your mom the entire entire time. (laughs) "Ah, I took typing. Now I know why. (laughs) Yeah, I'm thanking mom for making me take typing (laughs) in eighth grade. (laughs) Oh. Well. So I transcribe it and I realize it's a book Mm -hmm. and that just floors me because I had no idea because I was so stuck in trying to write I knew I was meant to be writing but I just had a million reasons time expertise money there just were a million 
roadblocks of my own that I was putting up. So that's how my guides got me to write the first book is it was this transcript of his session and it was just so powerful. Well, and there's a little bit of um, drama trauma for you deciding if you wanted to go through with this, not only, you know, if it was going to be public because you got his permission, even though it's everything is is, um, anonymous, that you've protected identities here not to, you know, disclose anything personal that people don't want out. But but the other thing, too, is, is, you know, putting your own vulnerability out there. And so you, you know, you talk with a few people, decide whether this was a good way to go with it. I think it's brilliant because this isn't the normal kind of regression therapy session that we read about. This is this is nuts and bolts and the the drama and the oh man the the psychology behind the two of you um, with the past life interaction that's unique and you don't usually get the psychology and all of the emotion that goes with the the reconnecting and as you're this is intense forgiveness therapy that you two are working on it absolutely is Wendy and thank you for your sensitivity and just really um, bringing that that point home because honestly I didn't want to share this this story I didn't want to share it as nonfiction, but I realized it was just one of those moments when you have to choose are you going to stand in your truth and that was that was the moment and here I was you know starting to build a healing practice and why the heck would I want to share a story where I have harmed the person egregiously Mm -hmm. and that's what's led to their chronic pain, um, both physical and emotional pain. Why would I want to share that story as a healer? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a good reason and that's why it's here. (laughs) (laughs) We've got to be real. We've all been saints and sinners and it just, we've all been on both sides of, the coin. I, I truly believe healers, whether you're a massage therapist, a physician, a past life regressionist, I, I believe we've been on the other side of the coin and have destroyed people and have tortured people and have hurt and harmed people. I mean, this story was unusually graphic, yeah. which is why I give it a disclaimer. But to have, to have a, a professional athlete be able to go through this sort of a session and for him to say that his pain level, the the 1 to 10 pain level scale, to have that move from like 7 to 8 down to 3, yeah. and for him to then just be able to, you know, stay and con- at that level and continue to get better years later, it was all worth it. Those are layers, and that part of it was, I mean, almost initially when you guys go into this session, he has immediate relief. You're not done yet. But that allows him, in my opinion, to be free to, okay, that, that overlay, that, and it was a protection. That's, I just see that as a protection. That pain was there until he was ready to address the underlying core. And that's where that trauma um, really gets intense because that's where it does need the, the warning of, um, this isn't TV, this is real life. <laughs> it, it has a, a deep and a hidden meaning and it's traumatic to read it if you're you know if if you're imagining yourself being in that same spot does that make sense and yes and i'd like people to understand that your higher self and your guides are the architect of your experience of your life but also of your past life regression and you don't see or experience anything that you're not ready for and it's not going to be beneficial to you The suggestion that I give to people as they move into the trance is go to a time and place with the most healing and information for your life today. And we talk about that suggestion ahead of time. And if they don't like that suggestion and it feels like, oh, that's a little too open-ended, we can purposefully ask for, I only want to see uplifting, positive lives because I'm at the place where I'm feeling depressed or anxious. You know, we can do that too. We can architect it. Or people can also um, come to me not because of the typical chronic pain, anxiety, or depression, but because they have stuck creativity and they really want to get into public speaking. They want to start a podcast, write a book. We can help them do that too. 
Well, we're going to get back into it. Regression Healing 1. This is the Huntsman, the Lord High Mayor, and the World War II Soldier. And what we're going to check out is the, the session where it's the Spirit Guide Reunion part of this session that continues. Because it's not all doom and gloom. And when you do meet with your higher self or the little little folks who are trying to kick you up into a better behavior, <laughs> sometimes there's humor involved. My guest is Wendy Rose Williams and regression healing is what we're talking about, past life therapy. There's there's so much that goes on with this and the healing is a huge part, but there are surprises where you find out your life connects with others that right here around you have had some sort of a presence with a prior incarnation. And that's where that reincarnation comes in handy too. So stick around, we're gonna find out what the high guide said, the spirit guide reunion. Wendy's Coffee House, KCMO Talk Radio. Wendy's Coffee House, KCMO Talk Radio, my guest, Wendy Rose Williams, Seattle area, past life regressionist. She's an author and a speaker, a Reiki healer, ordained minister, and a channel. And this is just, you know, the tip of the iceberg, okay? Because she's a lot more. <laughs> you, you don't always get to put it all on the back of the book. But getting into this past life experience, I want to set it up just a little bit by saying, with this, with the book, you've, you've covered everything, regression, healing, one, and you put, this is the, the difference about this between it and other stories, because you might have read other past life histories with either Brian Weiss or uh, Michael Newton. This, this involves two people who have been engaged in a past life form, some way, shape, or form, past life incarnation, maybe 16 times, or at least that's what the two of you have agreed that this seems to be a fit. And with this session, this has come about as a result of getting that other stuff uncovered with the layers peeled back to get to where you can come into this. And so when you're getting to this regression healing and he gets into the spirit connection, the spirit guide reunion, that's where you guys have crossed a new bridge. Yes, absolutely. And what, what happens in sessions is we, we go through uh, that past life energy that we need to experience, which can also be from earlier in this lifetime, but we can also go through what's a, a more traditional past life, and he did go through three of those, and then we cross over to the light, whatever your belief system is, you know, heaven, the universe, the stars, whatever your belief system is. And that's where um, the healing power of humor really, really came in, um, because his client's reunion with his guide was absolutely hysterical. And I just was kind of like sitting back, watching and listening. It was like it was like back slapping in the locker room that like a woman wouldn't normally see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and. And his guide, who, by the way, is 40 feet tall, is the way he presents. Oh, that himself. helps. <laughs> Not intimidating well, at all. <laughs> make sure you really know I'm here. <laughs> is is just debriefing. I ask him to, to debrief the World War II soldier life because I thought that one had the most trauma to it of the three. And it was the, the third one and final one we had just seen. So I asked the guy to debrief that one. And the punchline of what he says to this young 18 or 19 year old American um, young man who dies in World War II in, in Italy. I mean, here his life has barely started. He's literally still a teenager. And his guide just says to him, Well, you could have been a better shot. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe you'd still be alive today. Like, okay. And I'm like, <laughs> At first, I'm kind of like aghast. Yeah. But that's just my reaction. And the client is just, he bursts into laughter and he laughs so long. I mean, tears are like literally rolling down his face because, of course, this guy knows him the best mm -hmm. and knows what's going to be hysterical to him. And it literally got to the point where I'm like, okay, I think you need to go take a bathroom break because he <laughs> 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 laughed. So long and so hard, but it's an energy release. It's a tremendous energy release, and it's very, very healing. And the fact that he was able to connect with his higher self and the awe in his voice when he meets with his higher self, with his soul, when he crosses over, and we integrate those two, 
and then he has this kick-ass reunion with his guide, it just really changed his life. Well, part of this, too, there's an explanation, at least for him, talking about the green room, the life between lives, and working out your signals. I, the play-by-play -play on this is, is, yeah, it's the guy in the locker room. <laughs> exactly, exactly, because he's seeing the green room as like the ready room before you incarnate. And, and yes, and you, you can tell his sports background from this. Yes, that's just how his brain works and how he expressed it of, well, you need to work out what these signals are going to be so you'll know when your guides are near and so that you can speak with them. But he was not able to connect with them until this session, and he was in his 60s. Mm -hmm. So it was a really, really big deal to be able to then build that bridge, build that relationship so that he could feel that loving wisdom and support of his guides and just to enhance his intuition. Well, and it seems like that's what he needed to get to the next level because the next level, the, the really intense, deep working level is where you guys drill back and you're part of the trauma. You are basically the egg, the core of his trauma. And was that a surprise? It was a horrible shock. I had no idea. Uh, my guides had told me before the session that it was going to be the most difficult, challenging session of my life. So I immediately said, well, am I supposed to do it? Yeah, yeah. Can I duck? <laughs> and am I supposed to do it now? Yeah. Is this going to be beneficial for him? Because I wanted to make sure I had to put the client first. So I really had to uh, pull myself back because I was, I was horrified when he named the person that had harmed him um, in a very specific way and had uh, tortured him mm -hmm. and he named his mother. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I love his mother. He loves his mother. I was still just like writhing around from that. So I missed that he said there were two people involved. And so it took a while for me to realize that there was also an inquisitor at the, at the, um, Event. Medieval type, yeah. type scene, let's the say. Event. Yeah. Um, so that was that was pretty interesting, particularly because I was drawing the parallel. Here I am, this past life regressionist, asking him questions. Uh -huh. And I've done it more as an inquisitor in a not so nice way. Yeah. 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 With ammo um, <clears throat> and yeah. after after effects and trauma. Yeah. OK. So with that, though, that's why this book is compelling. That's why this story matters. That's why. When we can see the flip side of here you are working to undo the trauma, helping to alleviate his pain, and at the same time the pain you didn't even know you had until you could see, oh, wow, this is what it did. And so I think all of this was preordained, and that's the way I work with it anyway, that you got each of you got to a point in your transitions, your evolution to be able to go back and say, oh, by the way, this is the time we need to fix this. Does that make sense? I completely agree. You've hit the nail on the head again, Wendy. Um, I, I know we had a contract for him to wake me up spiritually. I know we had a contract for um, him to break my heart repeatedly until I stood in my power fully without abusing it. And those are brilliant contracts. Those completely changed my life. Well, that part of it, I think, is, is the beginning for anyone who's working through trauma and through pain to recognize that it may not be on this plane. It might not be a superficial bruise or a break. It could be that soul level that's being carried forward as a reminder. Hey, by the way, it's about time you worked on this, <laughs> you know? Yes. And that's what I love about facilitating sessions for people because they can get those answers that they've never been able to understand you know, why have I had three divorces? Why won't my adult child speak to me? Why have I had cancer three times? It, you're able to get those answers and you're able to get to peace and to be able to really bring in love and joy and balance the energy within yourself. That changes everything. 
want to come back in this next segment and talk about the forgiveness and the techniques. And then you also have some recommendations. Wendy Rose Williams, Regression Healing One. That's the book that we're talking about right now. But you can get on our website, wendyrosewilliams.com, and get more information because this is something that is available to anybody, anytime. Uh, You don't have to have any prerequisite. You don't have to have had a past life with her. No. (laughs) But you may find out you, you did. It's Wendy's Coffee House, KCMO Talk Radio. Wendy's Coffee House, KCMO Talk Radio. Regression Healing One. Okay, that should give you a clue. One. What comes after one? If you're like me and anything can come after one, no. Two. <laughs> Depends on how much I digress. Oh, it could be one and a half, it could be six. Uh, but if we go in the in linear way, forgiveness quotations, that was what this was about, basically, the end of the book, after you realize that this is really at the core level a way of two souls coming back together and saying, this is why we did this. And each one becomes bigger and more and beyond what they were before. But it took a little trauma to get there. I mean, yeah, that the Inquisitor thing, you kind of drilled down on that one. It, you know, that's what I'm looking at projecting on is that masterful torturer who's now coming back as the healer. And he's just the way to make this happen for you, in my opinion. Yes, you're you're right on, Wendy, because we're talking about the soul's journey in a lot of ways. And just, I, I feel we, we incarnate many times, whatever life form it is, whatever planet we're on, whatever dimension we're in, to be able to progress as souls. And the way we do that is by having experiences. So that's why I work really hard not to have any judgment, whatever might come up in people's sessions or or in in daily life it's not my job to say you know you should have done this or should have would have could have just throw them out the door as well as just let's just deal with where we are and just be as kind and loving but you know still have discernment and boundaries um in the in the daily life and just keep keep moving forward and even though this is a true story um i i think it relates on many different aspects for people who are I mean, for us, it's a novel because we're not living it. And so this you get pulled into it very quickly. But at the end, when you're going through the forgiveness and offer a few bits of insight, there's a quote, to forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover the prisoner was you. Yes, yes. And we've got the key. And until we forgive ourselves, we're not willing to see it or use it. I mean, those self-limiting beliefs that we put in can be pretty profound. And that's why it's so fantastic during session to be able to help people learn how do I get to that subconscious uh, wisdom that's really there and be able to tap into it. It's just, it's super fun and amazing. You also have some practitioner recommendations, and one of those I thought was fascinating. Donya Wicken, um, the author of, and it's an upcoming, not out, not out yet, the website's available, but it's I'm Just an Ordinary Dead Guy. That got my attention. Yes, and it's a fantastic um Website Because what Donia specializes in, she helps people um, stuck energy. She helps ghosts, earthbound souls get on home. Because if they're looking back and they're having regret or not wanting to let go or wanting to get revenge or take care of family, whatever the motivation is, and just looking backwards, backwards, backwards and not going up to the light – or, or feeling that they're not worthy of it, feeling that, let's say it's a person who's suicided or, you know, whatever it might be, and they just don't feel worthy of it. Um, she does some amazingly skilled work, and she helped me um, when I was literally stuck um, as a ghost from one of my experiences with this client that we've been talking about that I had the 16 or 17 lives with. Mm-hmm. So that's how Donia and I met. Um, originally was she helped me. Well, and I think in the story you said it was about 300 years you spent there in that limbo area of because of the trauma and not being able to connect with that life partner, uh, getting out of that zone. Yes, exactly, exactly. And that's that's my second book, um, The Flow One, Plymouth Plantation. And so that's a fiction series, but certainly um, inspired by my past life experiences and where Regression Healing 2 is going to go, um, it's going to be, it's Joe and Marilyn. Um, yes, that Joe and that Marilyn. 
and it's past life regression sessions with a uh, Joe DiMaggio and with a Marilyn Monroe. So um, really, that, one, that one's taking some courage to publish too, because it kicks off a lot of um, credibility questions, but I can only report what happened to and speak my truth the best way I can. And that's what I'm doing in that book. It's, it's um, about three quarters complete. Oh, that one sounds fascinating. It's not only because of, you know, the male female drama, but because they're very recognizable figures. Yes, yes. A lot of people um, just have a lot of um, investment um, in both in both those um, both those lives, and particularly um, when the two of them um, were were together, and and then not together yet still together. It's it's a pretty fascinating um, story of coming apart and. And just, um, you know, that that very powerful back and forth. Well, you kind of address that with this in, in this book when the character goes through and he's your client. He, he's the William Shakespeare question. You know, were you? And there's a lot of question about was William Shakespeare just a fiction anyway? You know, the, a drama that somebody else hid behind that mask. So so coming up with those names and sometimes it's like you're you're giving it the benefit. There's a there's an out by saying this is the character or the archetype that we attach to these big exactly. names. Exactly. Understanding archetypes, understanding the collective um, consciousness, and yes, there's there because there can be multiple explanations. And I, I trained with, with Brian Weiss, and the way he puts it is, if it's a fantasy, fine. Still explore it because there's still value in it. Because why that fantasy? Mm -hmm. So let's explore it. And we can't prove any of this. So we just we just have to to speak our own truth and have our own experiences and allow other people to do the same. Give them the respect. I I do not. I, I will not be in the place of saying this person was or was not. Um, you know, someone in a past life. That's that's their own truth to find. Okay, so if someone wants to uh, connect with you, and how, how do you work? Um, through my website is a great way to request a complimentary phone appointment, and we can just talk with one another and just have me understand what's going on in, in your life and see if this makes sense for you, and we can just have that conversation and set what an intent would be for the session. And certainly, if you know if it's not a fit, I help refer people all the time and enjoy doing that too. Now, okay, the hypnotherapy you do—is it the quantum hypnotherapy? Is it Dor Dolores Cannon version? I, or? I, I do regression healing, which was inspired by um, quantum healing hypnotherapy. I trained with a Dolores Cannon student, and he then created and branded regression healing. Okay. And then I trained with Dr. Weiss directly. And then I trained with a Michael Newton student. So I went for, you know, kind of the big three. I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> the trifecta. Yes, <laughs> yes, because they all have such amazing um, things to offer, and it's all a little bit different. And then from that, I was just able to add my own um, healing mix to it because of the, the Reiki Master um, and, and other training. And I'm also a certified spiritual teacher. Okay, so you've got a lot of the bases covered. Anybody who is interested and you're listening to this, go ahead and either pick up the phone and call, and um, the, the phone is on the website here, wendyrosewilliams.com. And what I want to say is that my spirit guides are so much like his because if I had been involved in something like that, they would have told me the very same thing if you could have been a better shot. <laughs> you could have done your homework like, duh. Okay. <laughs> Drafted or not, go prepared, the Boy Scouts. Yeah, it's just, that's the way that works. Hey, Wendy, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your time and your thank talent. Thank you, Wendy. This was you know wonderful. And I appreciate your audience. Thank you. All right, so one way or the other, we are connected, whether we know it or not in this lifetime. That's what this whole thing is all about, incarnating and enjoying the opportunities we have to learn, live, grow, evolve, explore, wonder, and that's, I guess, what I'm going to have to do with my fog thing. I'm still trying to figure out how to drill down into what it actually means. Maybe I'll know. Be that, it could be that the fog is the clue. I'm not supposed to know until it clears. Thanks for listening. Till next time, stay curious. WendyRoseWilliams.com. Check out your own past life info. See ya. Football game. I'm at the grocery.
grocery store. What? I'm at the combination football game and grocery store. Wait, you're at the football game What? and the grocery store? Nah. I'm at the combination football game and grocery store. Groceries through Instacart, delivered to my door. I don't have to choose between football and the grocery store. We're an Instacart family. Oh my goodness, we saved so much time with same-day grocery delivery. So we joined Instacart Plus. And now we're saving more money. We get unlimited free delivery on orders over $35. 5% credit back on pickup. And a family account to shop together. Did you know members save $460 a year when they order at least once a week? I do now. See how much you'll save. Visit instacartplus.com for two weeks free. Average savings exclude membership fee. Individual savings may vary. Credit back excludes alcohol. Paid membership auto renews. Additional terms apply.